I see you. Hi, hello. Hi guys. You have made it. You have found the event. If you know somebody that is having trouble finding this event, make sure to share it out, okay? So I have shared the, the paint class to my personal page, to my painting class uh, group, and to my business page, but some of you guys might have a harder time finding it. If you said that you were going or interested, you should be able to um, see the event. Oh, I'm so glad. But if you have somebody that m may have trouble or is struggling, I'm just going to wait for everybody to uh, pop on to make sure that we're all able to tune in and get ready to go. Yay! Hello, hello! I'm seeing a lot of hellos. So if you are new to painting with me, be sure to let me know. And if you're painting from somewhere other than Kitsap County like me, uh, let me know where you're from. I am from Port Orchard, Washington. My name is Danielle Rembert. I am a Northwest artist from Port Orchard, Washington, and I teach people how to paint and draw like me, hopefully. I've seen a lot of really cool paintings, and so I'm hoping that we're able to have a, a good time with this one today and play, and I will talk about what you guys need while we're waiting for people to jump on. So hello, hello. Eagle River, Alaska? How did you find me? How did you find me all the way in Alaska? That is so cool. Yay. I love seeing that uh, there's people tuning in from all over the place. That's really cool for me. Yay. So today's theme is donut panic or donuts. And we're going to, if you have a sweet tooth or you just love playing with bright colors, um, this is going to be a really easy uh, but fun, vibrant colored painting. Uh, you guys only need a few supplies, so I'm just going to go over supplies while we're waiting for everybody to tune in and, and catch up with us, okay? So, if you are painting with me today, you will need one pencil. Da -da -da. It doesn't have to be sharp like mine or have an eraser. You will need to have a canvas or a piece of paper, back of a cereal box and some cardboard works great. Okay, um, I will suggest that you guys get a plate or, you know, a couple plates, one for mixing, one for tracing. Um, so this is going to be our donut shape on our canvas. So however big you want your donut to be, that's the size of the circle that you need. Or you can freehand it, that's cool. But what I did was I made sure that I had a plate and then I found a cup in my cupboard so that I had a donut hole size circle in the in the center okay so canvas paper cardboard make sure that you oh Iowa that's really awesome well thank you for tuning in I'm happy to see you that's cool so pencil paper canvas make sure that you have like a plate something round it doesn't have to be big like this if you want to do a whole bunch of donuts all over your canvas and different uh, frosting colors and different sizes or different shapes um, you can definitely do that, uh, but make sure that you have two round objects, and if you only have one, you're just going to have to freehand the circle in the middle, okay? So we have those. Uh, I have a water bowl to clean my brush, and then I will suggest that you have at least one flat paintbrush, but if you have like a small detail paintbrush, like this with a little point, on it like that, that could be helpful later if you want to add sprinkles or you want to add any other fine details. But you can complete this whole painting using just one brush. So that's all that you need as far as the extra supplies. Um, if you need an easel and you like painting upright rather than flat on a table, if you go back to my main page or you check out my YouTube channel, there is a tutorial on how to make um, a free at home easel with cardboard, your old Amazon boxes or something. Uh, the only colors that you need for this painting are the basic primary colors. Um, if you have brown, that could be helpful. If you don't have brown paint, that's okay. I can tell you how to mix brown paint, uh, but you'll need white for sure, uh, red, blue, yellow. So if you have extra colors like pink or orange or purple or light br blue or any of those things pre-mixed, then you should be good to go, okay? So I'm gonna flip this camera around so you guys don't have to stare at me too long. This is my kitchen, by the way. 
<laughs> that painting up top was done by one of my favorite students. So there you go. I'm going to turn this around. So today we are painting some colorful donuts. This is a little bit different than the picture you guys saw because variety is the spice of life, people. Let me tell you, we want to do stuff that is different. We don't all want to have exactly the same painting. That's boring, right? We want to have fun with this and do something creative. So this is what we're working on. So how this painting is going to happen is it's going to happen in three stages. And I say this at a lot of my classes, okay? So the first stage will be to create a very simple pencil outline, a layout, um, if you will, of where you want everything to be at. And then once we do the layout, then we will do the base colors or prime our canvas. So if you have lots and lots of time to paint, uh, instead of just like an hour or two like you're painting with me, you would want to, if you're painting on a canvas at least, you want to seal your surface. Um, since we are painting in a limited time period, we are going to seal our surface by creating what is called a tonal background. So instead of just putting white primer on our canvas, we're going to use the color of your choice. So if you didn't like yellow or you wanted like baby blue or purple or hot pink or something else and then you wanted to change the colors of your donuts, you could certainly do that. But uh, we put the tonal background or the primer on our surface, at least for the canvas, because uh, canvas is cotton and so the paint will absorb into the surface and we want to layer the paint so that it doesn't continue to absorb. So you put a primer coat or a tonal background on so that the paint forms a skin on the surface and that uh, all the other paint lays on top and that's how you get it to be all smooth and nice. If you're painting on paper, you don't need to create a, um, a primer, but you can create a tonal background. So first step is pencil outline. Second step is to create our tonal background or block coloring. And then our third step will be to add in detail. So if you have some kiddos joining you today, I'd love to know how old everybody is. If you're new to painting with me, take big deep breaths and make sure that you are relaxed and comfortable and you have snacks and things to sip on near you so that um, you're able to enjoy yourself while you take breaks, okay? So here's our painting. I'm gonna take this away. So we start with a white canvas. Looks like we've got, you know, several people joining us. Like I said, if you know somebody that would enjoy this class or is having trouble finding the event, be sure to share. Uh, <laughs> Carrie, yeah, you're 10. Uh, be sure to share the event with people that you know would enjoy this. If you can't paint now, but you want to paint later, uh, you can definitely watch the replay afterwards, okay? So the first thing that we're going to need is you're going to need your pencil. Oh, it's not Carrie, it's her son. Well, that makes sense, okay. 47 and 10, I love it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is your pencil, and we're going to need a round object. So if you have a plate or something that you can use to trace, then we're going to use that, okay? So uh, we at least want to have one donut. So if you want to have more than one donut, then you're going to trace more than one circle. But here, so for instance, if I want to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to trace your big circle wherever you want it, except for you're not going to go all the way around. So I'm holding it in the middle firmly, and then I'm stopping and leaving a space wherever I want like a bite mark to be. If you don't want a bite mark in, the, in your donut, then you would trace all the way around. But we're going to start with, with that. And then if you want to have more than one donut or different donuts off to the side, then you would trace parts of the circle on different parts of your canvas, okay? So if I wanted to have more than one. Okay, but that's up to you guys. So if you, so here, I'll show you what the original looks like. So here in the picture uh, that you guys saw in the event, I just had one for this. I had a couple. So there's one, two, three, but I just used parts of the, parts of the plate to trace that. Nice light pencil lines. It doesn't need to be really heavy because we want to be able to paint over that later and you want to be able to cover it up. Okay, so once you have your big plate circles, on the canvas, you're going to want to take your cup or whatever object you can find that 
would be good for a center and you can kind of guess about where the center of your donut would be and then you're going to trace that circle okay and it's important to hold it firmly so you know where that's where that's at okay and if it's a little bit skinny on one side and a little bit bigger on the other that's okay don't worry about that we can adjust that with paint too Okay, so you're going to go around and you're going to do that on all these sections. Like this part, you probably don't need a circle because it's just a tiny little spot off to the side. So you'll just need to paint frosting and all the other stuff on the side. So hopefully you guys are able to do all of that. And I hope you guys have been able to stay occupied and that these paint classes are helping you out. Um, I really like being able to still connect with people and still offer things for people to do and so it's really cool to see everybody's end product too so I'll be really happy to see that okay so once you have all your circles traced we're gonna go back to the little gap that we left on this donut here okay and so we want to make it look like there's like a, a bite out of the <laughs> out of the donut so what you're gonna do is you're gonna use draw little U shapes to create like mimic little teeth so you're going to do, it doesn't matter how many you do, you, I would probably do like only like four or five, but you want to make them like this so they curve into the donut. Okay, so there's four right there for you. But I just did little short U shapes and I made sure they were all connected and make sound effects as you do your little line on there. <laughs> and then... Uh, that's how our bite is formed for, for the donut here. So does everybody have all their supplies? Am I speeding ahead too fast already? Or do, do people still need to get their stuff together? If you guys are doing okay and are on the same, same wavelength as me, just give me a thumbs up so I know that we're all doing okay. It might be hard to paint or draw and give me thumbs up though too so I understand that part as well so that's okay and if you're still drawing like I said some people don't draw as fast as me and that's okay too just let me know if you need me to slow down <laughs> but anyway so this is our basic basic pencil outline so um, the only thing that we have left to do is we want to make it look like we were eating these donuts, but we were also leaving a few crumbs behind. So right in the center, in this empty space here where our bites are at, we can just draw some kind of, you know, lumpy little spots. They don't have to be perfect circles or little squares, and they don't all have to be the same size. We just want them to look like crumbs and so instead of making a neat little pattern I just do little wiggly lumpy bumpies and then I make sure that they're all um, facing you know coming out like they're falling out but make sure that your shapes aren't too complicated either because you will also have to paint these in later so remember that but you can do as many or as few crumbs as you want you can make them spread out all over the place and if you want to add more later, we can definitely add more as the painting progresses, okay? But this is our very simple pencil outline to start with. So we used our big plate to trace our big circle. We used a cup to trace the center. We left a little space on the side here where we used very small little U-shapes to mimic teeth marks out of our donut. And then we did some random little wiggly lumpy bumpies that will resemble our little crumbs that showed we were enjoying our donut okay and then that's all we need for that part and then for the next part you're going to need to get your flat brush or your bigger brush um, and then you're going to need to choose the color that you would like to be the background color so in the original painting i chose yellow but if you guys want to use a different color like baby blue or purple or orange or something like that, that's absolutely fine. You just wanna make sure that it is a strong enough contrast that it's 
it's uh, going to show up against the brown and the, the colors that you do on your donuts, okay? And if you want to throw in a maple bar or something like that in there too, you could do, um, you know, a little rectangle off to the side or something to show not all of your donuts are round, okay? So once you have your big brush and your color of choice, you're going to paint the entire area around the outside of your donuts and then you're going to paint the little circles inside your donuts, okay? So the thing I want you guys to keep in mind when you're painting with your big brush is you want to make sure that one, you don't have so much paint that it's big blobs over your canvas. Uh, but you want enough to cover the um, cover the surface. So here I'm just gonna get my yellow ready and show you guys. So when you're getting next to the edge of your donut, make sure to remember that when you push against your brush, that the bristles are kind of kind of spread. Okay, and so you don't want to overlap your lines too much. But your bristles are gonna spread, and then you want to make sure that you're going over the paint more than one time. So I wouldn't just paint once, I would make sure that once I laid some paint down, I would run my brush over it a couple of times to make sure that it's nice and smooth and even. And don't be afraid to push against your brush to make with you know a little bit of firmness to make sure that it's nice and smooth, okay? So I'm painting on on paper instead of canvas like you guys, but if you're painting on canvas and you get like little speckle marks on your canvas, that means that you neither need to add more paint or use more pressure and run your brush over the surface more so that um, that paint really gets into the canvas and covers everything up, okay? All right, so it might get tricky when you start to get by the little pieces, and that's okay. Just make sure that you're kind of careful, and don't worry if you accidentally go over the, you know, over the outline a little bit. But you're just going to take the time to fill in all of these areas and blend them out. So you can either do one of two things. You can take your brush and you can use the wide part, or you can turn it sideways and you can use the skinny edge of your brush. So I find that when I'm doing outlines, I like to use the skinny edge because I'm able to control the brush more. And if you're new to acrylic painting, the lower you hold your brush while you're painting, the more control you're going to have over it. I have a little bit more experience and so I am um, I have found my place that I like to hold the brush, which is a little bit further back, but again, the lower you hold your brush when you're new to painting, you know, the more control you're going to have over it um, if you shake the table or you're trying to make a steady line or something like that. So, And I'll take pauses and I'll repeat as we go through. So if you guys have any questions or you're running into any problems, be sure to let me know because I want to make sure that you have the best painting that you, you can and that um, if you're struggling that you get the help that you need so don't be afraid to ask if you need help, okay? It's been really fun for me to get um, get acquainted with doing these live classes. I'm used to dealing and um, teaching people in person but you know this is kind of fun because I get to reach a different audience of people and all over the place like Alaska apparently so that's really exciting, and I'm happy for that. Um, and hopefully by offering these classes too, I'm able to help some people out that are, you know, st stuck at home or looking for something to do. And then, you know, you get to learn something new in the process too. And be proud because you end up doing stuff that's really cool. At least I'll think it's cool. So I like to get enough paint on my brush that I'm able to work it into the canvas, but enough that um, I'm able to control it too, because if you have too much paint on your brush, you might get a little messy with it. And so sometimes it's easier to uh, 
you know, work a little bit at a time and then you can come back and add more paint later. The only way we get better at anything is if we practice. So we don't just wake up in the morning and then all of a sudden we know how to cook a gourmet meal or to build a house or, you know, do our taxes. You have to practice by learning. And so just remember that and remember that, um, you know, there's no wrong answer in art. There's definitely ways to get certain techniques down. But the fun thing about art is that, um, you know, lots of different styles were created through experimentation and just expression. So just remember that your painting doesn't have to look like everybody else's if it makes you happy. You know, and part of learning is also about the process. And so just being able to relax and breathe and being able to listen to the sound of my voice or listen to your brush or listen to some nice music while you get lost in what you're creating on the canvas and not worry about um, too many other things. That's, that's a really nice thing about it too. It's completely therapeutic and um, it'll benefit your brain to keep it working and practicing and trying new things, especially if you're a very linear person, it's good to work the other side of your brain and try new stuff. So if you want to do lots of colors in your background, that's fun. Do lots of colors if you want. I just decided to keep it simple for this painting and use one color. If you're having trouble making your um, paint look smooth in the background, just make sure, like I said, the more you run your brush over the paint while it's still wet and fresh, the, the more smooth and finished it will look. And if it's not coating the way that you want to right away, just thin it out and smooth it out. And then when it's a little bit more dry, you can add another coat of paint to it. Sometimes you need more than one coat of paint. It's like painting uh, the walls in a house. Sometimes the color doesn't cover all the way and you just need to do it a couple of times to get the effect that, that you need. So don't worry if it doesn't cover in the first coat. Okay, so I'm done with my background. Now I just wanna make sure that the insides of my donuts are painted also. So try if you can, because I know it'll take practice too, but try if you can to keep your brush strokes like on the inside of your donut and around the outer edges curved, okay? You want those brush lines to be curved. So even if they are a little bit messy, they'll at least be making your viewer's eye look the direction you want them to look, which is around in circles. So I decided to paint on paper today just because I always paint on canvas and I want to show you guys how the painting can still, you know, look on different surfaces and also conserve canvases because, you know, that stuff starts to pile up a little bit in the house. So it's easier to store stacks of paper <laughs> for me. So here I've got my nice bright yellow background and you know, even with a dry brush, you can continue to run your dry brush over the surface and smooth paint out or to continue to add more paint if you want. There we go. So I've got all of my background painted. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush when I'm done with this part, and then we're going to go back to our pencil one more time. Give me thumbs up if you are done painting your background too, so I know that we're all on the same page. How's everybody doing out there? So 
So in order to make sure that our donut has a little bit of dimension or perspective, we want to draw um, the line where our frosting begins and where the breaded part of the donut begins. So we want to draw a little border between those. So once we have our entire background all done, we're going to go back to our pencil and we're going to draw some frosting on our donut. So I'm going to show you guys in the original painting again. I'm just going to bring this out so you can look. So if you notice, and we look at here, in order to create dimension on the donut and make it look like it's um, the you know curved a little bit, uh, we have the brown of the donut here along the bottom, and then we drew the line for the frosting a little bit of, along, you know, the bottom edge up here. But you notice that we don't have that all the way around. This is solid all the way here. We created a little area so that we have the, the brown of the donut peeking out, and then we also created that on the inner edge up above here. So you'll notice that this one's on the bottom and this one's on the, on the bottom of this circle and this one's on the top of the little circle and not all the way around. So what you're going to do with your pencil is you're going to go back to your painting and you're going to start in the lower half of your donut and you're just going to draw some, so this is kind of fun because you don't have to be perfect with this, you're just going to draw some wiggly lines and don't make them all exactly the same size okay and then you're gonna take that and end it on one edge so you're not going all the way half we're maybe doing it about one third of the way up the donut so this is going to be the brown part of the donut here and this is going to be the frosting and we want this to continue up here so we're going to go to the top part of the circle here and then you're going to do the same thing where you do wiggly stuff along the top edge right there okay and so this is going to make it look like when we get to painting that the frosting is down here on this part and then we got the the brown of the donut peeking out right here and right here on the bottom and then you'll do that on your other donuts also so like if I went over here I would make sure that maybe I had part of this peeking out right there and then I don't need to do anything here because it's peeking out right there and then up here I could do a wiggly line along the bottom like that okay and so once you have your background done and you have done the curvy lines for where your frosting needs to be you're then going to get out your brown paint so if you do not have brown paint like me, so I have this kind of uh, orangey brown color and I don't want it to be necessarily this bright so I will probably add a little bit of white to that. But if you do not have brown and you need to mix a brown color, um, brown is made by mixing yellow, red, and blue together. So what I would do is I would start by just taking, so I'll mix some on a plate just to show you guys how that's done. Um, just so that we're all learning something new here. So if I take a little bit of red, here, let's see. So here's a little bit of red. Here's a little bit of yellow. Okay, so I can make an orange. And if it's still pretty red, then get more yellow. So red goes a long way, guys. So you don't need a lot of red. You just need a, a little bit. But so, so there's my... There's my orange color. And then once I have that, I just need the tiniest, tiniest touch of blue, okay? And then I mix that together. And then you get, voila, brown. Okay, and then if it's looking a little green, that means that you added too much blue and that you just need to add a little bit more red to it. Um, but yeah, so yellow, red, and blue makes brown, okay? And then if this was too too dark and I wanted it to be lighter, I could add white to it. Or I could add a little bit more yellow to it. 
okay, to get the color that I want. Okay, but once you have your brown mix, you're gonna wipe your brush off so you don't have just an insane amount of paint on your brush. And then you're just going to paint in the areas on your painting show you what to draw after the background. Um, so what we did after we painted the background was we drew the frosting lines on our donut. So for instance, if your donut is here, you need to make sure that you start at the top of your circle and then you draw just a little wiggly line above that curves around and comes down, okay? And then you're gonna go to um, just above the bottom of your circle and you're gonna do a wiggly line down here and so when you paint in the brown of your donut that's gonna be here so I'll show you where that's at you're gonna paint that here and then if you you can't control your bigger brush and you need to use your littler brush that's okay if you need to switch brushes um, but yeah I'm just gonna paint down here Okay, so I'm just gonna paint this in really fast. Do, do, do. Okay, and you're gonna paint in down here. And then once you have this one painted, you're then gonna paint in this area right there, okay? Hopefully that answered your question, I hope I read that right and was able to answer it the way you needed me to. And so what I like about this is when you're painting the brown, um, you can then go over your pencil line a little bit and cover that up. If it doesn't cover up all the way, don't worry because we're going to add a couple of layers of paint and it doesn't need to be completely covered. Okay, so there's one part of your donut and then if you wanted it to have a little bit of a a lighter a lightness to it if you add a little bit of white to your paint and then blend it just in the middle of where you painted that just in the curve it'll add like a little reflection to it and then we're going to add the brown up here There is a little bit of a delay too when you guys ask questions, so I'm sorry if I don't get to your question immediately. I think it's just like a, a minute delay or something, so um, I try and answer them as fast as I see them. Okay, so what this does is that this is going this is going to add some dimension to your donut where it makes it look like this is the side, and this is the side, and then we're going to add frosting along the edges and fill in all that white but so that means if you did multiple donuts then this is going to be brown here underneath this part on the inside will be brown down there so I'm going to fill all those in and I'm going to wait for you guys to let me know that you guys are ready to move to the next step so if this is your first time tuning in or you have tuned into a few, but you're wondering how to go and watch the replays, you can do that a couple of different ways. Um, you guys may or may not have seen that I've started a Patreon account, and what Patreon is, is it's basically a subscription to content where if you subscribe for like $20 a month, you get unlimited access to all of my paint classes uh, online, and you can um, paint them at your convenience whenever you want. Uh, you also get perks like um, I send out free coloring pages and drawing tips and I send you a postcard every month and you get um, you know an art print of your choice of some of my original art for your membership and as a thank you and then I do little specials um, you know throughout 
time. And then if you only want to subscribe for one month or, you know, just check it out for like a week or something, uh, there is an option where you can just do it uh, one time. Um, but you can also um, ask me and I'll send you send you links to, to videos too. Or if you need one-on-one -on -one lessons or consults, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtual classes. Uh, so those are just ways that you can tune in and um, check things out or help to support what we're doing here. Um, yeah. And classes are all free uh, for the ones that I'm doing that are live. So anybody can participate if they have supplies. But if you don't have supplies and you live locally in Kitsap County, uh, I live in Port Orchard, um, I do have paint kits available that you guys can purchase that I've got ready for safe pickup or delivery. And the paint kits include um, different size canvases, different brushes, depending on, you know, what the project is you're working on, all the basic colors that you need, a plate, um, you know, paper towels, and then like if we're doing, you know, mixed media or other things, they would have extra little things inside there. And you can message me for more details if you need that stuff. Um, but you know, they are free if, if you have supplies and you just know somebody that needs something to do. I like to try and explain ways for people to do stuff inexpensively and with things from around their house. And so hopefully those tips help you guys out. Uh, I just recently did a live class with my daughter, a two day event where I showed everyone how to make paper mache uh, sculptures like for Easter. So if you wanted to play around with that and paint, uh, you could definitely learn from that lesson. And then, um, if you did want to show extra support too, instead of doing the Patreon or whatever, you can also make a contribution or a tip. I've put a link to my PayPal account, and you guys can certainly leave a contribution that way, and that is always appreciated because I always need to get more art supplies so I can do more stuff. So if the brown is too dark, like I said, you can take yellow or you can take a little bit of white, and then you can run it, you know, kind of through the the center of where the color is at and that'll lighten it up a little bit and it will also add a little bit of dimension to your to your donut make it look like it's a little bit glazed or has a little bit of roundness to it and um, if you're doing that though while the paint is too wet you want to make sure that you wait for it to dry a little bit and then you can come back in and add extra layers okay Cool. All right. So we've got the brown on our donuts now. So here's the fun thing. If you guys decide to paint more than one donut like I'm doing, uh, in the original painting I did all of my donuts with a purple glaze, but you don't have to do that. Like if you prefer chocolate donuts, you could make one of them a really dark, um, dark color and then add light sprinkles on top. You can do pink, you can do... Um, blue you can do i mean whatever whatever you guys want for the top of your the top of your donuts but you're going to clean your brush off again and i'm still using my my big brush here and once you have the brown painted in you're going to choose what color you want your donuts to be and you're going to start to paint those in a solid color so here's the thing about the the painting in the donuts is that we started with a perfect circle but we want to make these look a little bit more natural and so um, make sure that the edges that you're painting next to with the brown those are dry first because you don't want that paint to mix with the other colors but then also when you're painting in the color so for instance I want this donut to be pink frosting um, you can kind of you know wiggle the the lines a little bit on the inside and the outside just to make them look a little bit more natural okay we don't need to keep the perfect the perfect circle happening so you don't need to do a lot I would just maybe do like you can follow the line on the inner edge and then maybe add like one tiny little bump here and there and then smooth it and make sure that when you're painting in that you're making sure most of your brush strokes are nice and curved okay 
We don't want to be just painting up and down or right to left. We want to make our viewers' eyes go in the direction that we want to subconsciously. And how you do that is by using certain colors and also by directing them with brush strokes. So see when we're going on the outer edge here, you can kind of make it a little bit lumpy. That's kind of a bonus too if you're a beginning painter and you don't have really steady hands. Um, you can paint kind of lumpy lines on the outer edge. And if you're having trouble getting a crisp outer edge, it's probably either because you don't have enough paint on your brush or you're not pushing hard enough against your brush. You wanna make sure that you're pushing firmly so that you're able to drag your brush with control to get that crisp outer edge. And if you don't have pink and you need to make pink, you would just mix red and white on your on your palette. So if you don't have pink premix like I do, you can just take red with a little bit of white and you can mix it onto your palette and just make sure that you mix it onto your palette, your plate first so that you have the color that you want to use to be able to do that, okay? Yay, I'm glad you're back. Where'd you go? I didn't know you went away. <laughs> All right, so again, don't worry about using a ton of paint. Just use, you know, what I like to do is I call it the peanut butter technique. So I dip my brush into the paint and then I kind of wipe it on both sides so that I don't have a giant blob, but I definitely um, have enough that my brush is coated. And then I blend the paint on my canvas until I can't blend it anymore and then I get more paint, okay? So you don't want to have giant big blobs of paint on your canvas, okay? So again, if you're new to acrylic painting, the lower you hold your brush, and if you hold it like a pen or pencil, the more control you're gonna have over it. Also, you wanna pay attention to the direction your bristles are. So if you're getting brush strokes, you wanna kinda lay your brush a little bit more flat so that when you lift off, you're not getting you know, little, little straight up and down marks from your bristles springing back. So hopefully that helps you. Okay, and then when you come down here, if you accidentally overlap onto the brown a little bit, that's okay, uh, because if the paint is dry, if the brown paint is dry, it's not even gonna, it's not even gonna matter. It's not gonna show up, okay? It's not gonna mix together and make a weird color. Okay, so it'll just show up right on there just fine. just as long as the paint, uh, the brown paint is dry. Okay, if it's wet, then that's a different story. It's gonna mix together. But if you make sure, touch it, and make sure that it's dry, it's gonna be just fine. So see, just fill it in, fill it in, nice and solid. And make sure that your brush strokes are nice and curved, curve, curve, curve. Go around, nice and curved. And again, like I said, if you have a hard time controlling on these little small sections, if you need to use a littler brush, then you can definitely use a littler brush. Do what makes you comfortable and works for you. I'm just used to painting with one brush so I can do a lot of different stuff with my big brush. Not everybody can do that and that's okay. Okay, so again, you want it to be a little bit bumpy, and if it's a little rough on the edges, just come back in with a little bit more paint. And remember that when you push against your brush, your bristles are going to spread a little bit. So remember that so that when you're outlining, it doesn't just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Start a little bit, um, you know, like if you're wanting to do the edge outline, make sure you start a little bit in so that you can account for when your bristles spread out. <laughs> so when you have your solid color in here painted, and like I said, not everybody's going to paint at the same speed. I'm a fast painter, so I'm going to be able to fill it in a lot faster than you. Uh, but we want to create a lighter tone um, to create more of a glaze on the donut or to create more of a dimension. So with my dirty brush, I can just touch some white paint, and then I can blend white paint in the center of my donut, okay? 
And don't worry if it's a perfect line. We don't need it to be a perfect line uh, with perfectly smooth edges. You just want it to be a little bit lighter and following the curve, okay? So I just take a little bit of white paint and wipe off your brush if you have a lot. And then you just take that and then the more you run your brush back and forth over the paint, while it's wet, the more it's going to smooth out, okay? So we want this inner edge to still be a little bit darker, and we want the outer edge to be a little bit darker. But see, you can just wipe. See, I'm just wiping my brush. Wipe, wipe, wipe. So if you want it to be more dramatic, you can definitely come in with more white. But you want to follow the curve of the circle. That's very important, okay? And if you went a little crazy with the white, you can always wait for it to dry and then you can come back in. See, I can come back in with a little bit of pink. And it's okay if there's multiple tones of the pink. All that's gonna do is it's gonna add dimension to your painting. So don't worry if it's not all one solid color. All one solid color looks like is flat, flat boringness. And we don't want flat boringness. We wanna add some dimension in there. Okay, so you can continue to paint all of your donuts the same color, or if you want to do, you know, different colors, you can definitely, definitely do that. So, for instance, if I wanted to have like a chocolate, a chocolate donut, I can make, you know, my brown and mix it with a little bit of um, black so that I get like a chocolate brown color. And then I can fill in... Um, fill in the frosting on one of my donuts like that. So see if I wanted maybe this one to be a chocolate donut. See, I threw you guys off. You were thinking all of our donuts were gonna be pink and here I am using different colors. There I go again. So see, it's okay if my line is a little wiggly on the outside makes it a little bit more natural. And then again, make sure that your lines are nice and curved as you're going around the outer edge. So all I did to make that chocolate brown, if you guys are trying to make the chocolate brown, is I mixed my brown color and then I added a tiny bit of black to it. And then again, you always wanna mix on your palette first to make sure that it's the color you want. And then you also wanna make sure that you mix enough that you're gonna be able to um, you know, paint the entire area that you're wanting to paint. So you want at least like a little dollop the size of a dime, probably. It's the best amount for creating and filling in those areas. Mmm, chocolate, that's right. How many of you guys are having cravings for food that you're not able to eat right now? For instance, my favorite Chinese food restaurant is closed right now and not doing takeout. And so I was fiending for that yesterday and I called and so sad. <laughs> it's those little, little things that you miss. And that is definitely one of the things that I miss right now. Is there anything that you guys miss that you're not able to do or to eat right now that you really want? There's also an Indian food place in the next town that I really love and they have a like a buffet. Oh. A garlic naan and curry and all the yummy stuff. So again, once you get that dark color in there, you want to make a lighter shade of it. So you would take a little bit of white onto your onto your dirty brush and then you would run in the middle. back and forth just to make that a lighter color in the middle to just make it look like there's a little bit of a glaze glaze on your donut glazed donut all right so if I wanted to be like that caramelly color that maple bars are I would maybe add a little bit more yellow and white to my brown So 
So if I wanted it to be like a maple bar, I would probably add more yellow, maybe a little bit of white. I'm gonna pretend this is like that maple bar frosting. Mmm, delicious. What's your favorite flavor of donut? If somebody shows up to where you're at with a dozen donuts, what's the donut that you reach for if you have first dibs? I like the ones that have like the maple bar frosting, but then have peanuts all over the top. Does anybody else like that kind? What's your favorite kind of donut? What's the first one that you reach for <laughs> if you have first dibs? And then see, you can even take that, that color and you can even wipe that on the inner edge of your chocolate donut if you want. Oh, yum, this is making me hungry. Ooh, yeah, jelly-filled donuts. Those are good, too. <laughs> uh, I grew up in the Tri-Cities before I lived here. I lived in Richland in eastern Washington, and they have this place that has been open since like the 40s or 50s, and it's called Spud Nuts. Have you guys ever heard of a Spud Nut? <laughs> it's made with potato flour instead of regular flour, and I grew up on craving Spud Nuts, and whenever I go to town and they're open, I gotta make sure that I stop and I have a Spud Nut. <laughs> because yum. Yes, who doesn't love a good donut, right? Oh, so I forgot to paint my little crumbs. So once you're done with all of your donuts, you're gonna need to, all the big part, you need to clean off your, your brush, and then if you have a little brush, you're gonna get out your little brush, see, do, 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 and then you're gonna start to paint in your little, your little crumbs. And so again, if you didn't like your line, Right off the bat, you can definitely um, overlap your line and that's totally fine. It's probably easier to cover up your pencil if you do that too. And again, the lower you hold your brush, the more control you're gonna have. You can even use your pinky to balance your hand. And make sure you have a good little dollop of paint on there so you can just spread it around and get nice crisp crisp edges. And so see, I'm kind of laying my brush, rather than pointing it just straight like this, I'm kind of laying my brush flat or at a slant against the surface while I paint. That way I can see what I'm doing. And then also I'm going to get less brush strokes if my brush is kind of flat rather than straight. See, the thing with acrylic brushes is the bristles are usually, like if you've ever gotten a variety pack, the bristles are um, shorter they're soft and smooth but um, because they're made for pushing around thicker paint if you have your brush straight like this um, every time you make a brush stroke the bristles spring back into place and so how that causes an issue is if you're trying to fill in an area and make it nice and smooth um, you're gonna get little marks and so how you avoid those marks is by laying your brush fairly flat against the surface and just drag it around so that you get a smoother, smoother finish. And it might take a while to get comfortable with the paintbrush in your hand, but once you kind of figure out your, how you handle it, then, you know, it becomes easier. Like I said, everything becomes easier with practice. So see, I'm just filling in all of my little crumbs. So make sure you have enough that you're filling in and coating this up but again we don't want this like glistening and having giant blobs blobs of paint on there so make sure that um, if you have a lot a lot of paint in there to wipe off your brush and use a dry brush to go in and kind of blend the paint or help pick it up off the surface here dun, 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 dun. so there are my crumbs so I did a pink frosting donut, I did a chocolate, dark chocolate frosting donut, and then I did like a maple bar-ish kind of finish 
on there and then once we had our color in we made sure to use a lighter tone like of either white or just a lighter pink or a lighter brown just to blend on the the center part of the color here to make it look like it has a little bit of shine and also to add a little bit of extra dimension to our donut okay and so we can add a little bit of extra dimension and shine to our little crumbs too by doing the same thing where you take like a little bit of white paint so I dip it into my white and then I kind of wipe off my brush and then you can just like in one little corner you can just kind of wipe a little bit of white so not along the edge but maybe just along one little side and you can do it in different areas um, of the crumbs but just to make it look like you know the lights kind of catching the side of it and the frosting is still kind of shiny but and not just flat that just adds a little bit of extra dimension so all I did was I just added a tiny little bit of white to my brush and then you know wiped it off into one little corner just on the inner edge of some of my crumbs just to make them have a little bit of extra dimension there and so if you wanted to intensify that later um, how you add shadow is that you just make it a little bit like wherever you add the light you would make it like slightly darker um, along the, the bottom edge here but we can get into that in another class at another time but yeah so this is where I'm at so far so far it's looking looking pretty yummy I don't know if you guys think so but I certainly do I'm hungry I'm ready to eat some eat some food so I'm going to continue to use my little brush here and then if I want to add sprinkles to my donuts I just want to make sure that one the paint is dry wherever I'm going to apply that at so how you tell if it's dry is obviously run your finger over it and if it comes off on your finger then it's not time okay and so if it's not time to paint in this area you can certainly add sprinkles and things in the area out here so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a variety of colors that are contrasting with whatever the donut is so for instance if I wanted to do sprinkles or add nuts or something to the chocolate or the maple I would use a contrasting color like white or you know white with yellow so it looks or light brown so it looks more like nuts um, and then for sprinkles you can use a variety of rainbow colors so uh, you know white is a great one that pops out against the yellow you want to make sure that you're using darker colors um, I like to use my little brush for this and I just get a nice little blob of paint and then you can just lay your brush flat against the canvas and then just push against it it doesn't have to be fancy you don't have to draw a line if you you know if you are don't have a steady hand but if you do have a steady hand then you can just um, drag it across but I like to get a good amount of paint and then just lay my brush kind of flat against the surface and then push it so see if I use blue I can take that and then add blue all over but I want to make sure that I'm pushing it in different directions so this sprinkle would be flat this one is you know and then you can push it against both sides like if one side is round and the other one isn't so if I pushed and this side was round and I wanted to round out the other side I would just flip my brush around and then push against the other side so you can wipe off your brush if you have too much and it's out of control but you can add those literally all over your canvas okay so if you have a good amount of paint you should be able to just push against your brush flat and it will make those show up wherever you want and you can add them all over in the background here and then uh, once you get like all your blue down then you would switch to another color like red or white or pink or blue you know or purple whatever you want um, but definitely pay attention to the contrast of the colors so for instance I have a very light background so you know white sprinkles probably won't show up as great against the light background but colors like red or blue or purple or green definitely will so um, yeah see so you can continue to add these wherever you want and then make sure that between colors that you clean off your brush and that um, 
you know, add them to different areas. So let's see. So on the pink, for instance, see if I want to take white, I want to clean off my brush, make sure it's nice and clean, and then I can add, see, little white sprinkles. So I'm just laying my brush flat. And like I said, don't try and create a pattern, just create, you know, turn your brush at different angles so that they are looking like they were actually dropped on there naturally. And then, you know, you want to kind of like, you're not creating a pattern, but you are being aware of space and making sure they're not too crowded in one area and then really spread out in another area. So this is the part that can get kind of therapeutic. You can sit and zone out and just add sprinkles to your heart's content all over the whole painting. So obviously, if you add sprinkles, they're either just going to be on the background or they're just going to be on the frosting. You wouldn't add them to the brown parts of the of the donut because you want to make it look like they're just stuck to the to the frosting. Do you guys have any questions so far? You've been awfully quiet. I'm used to seeing more questions or more uh, snide commentary. <laughs> I want to make sure that you guys are understanding and able to follow along with everything. And if you have questions, please feel free to, you know, you can also message me after the fact. So if I didn't answer something and you're still painting and you had a question and you wanted that answered, you can message me privately. I have lots of free time, guys. You could also add, if you wanted to add a little bit extra dimension, you could add little bits of brown on the inner edge of where the bite mark is if you wanted to make it look like, you know, part of the brown is exposed or showing. There we go. I'm hungry too, Jack. I want donuts. Where's my donuts, guys? Me and my daughter made a ton of banana zucchini bread yesterday, though. So I can grub on that. Sorry guys, forget the no carb diet. So see, you just wanna make sure that you're aware of spacing. And so if you're looking at your painting, you can definitely tell if there's too many or too few sprinkles in certain areas. And then, like I said, if you wanted to add like, I wanna make it look like there's peanuts or something on top of the the maple filled donut I would probably take like a little bit of yellow and white and mix yellow and white together and then I can just you know because they're peanut chunks they don't have to be um, you can add a little brown to it too to make sure but you want to make sure that they're contrasting so um, if you're doing the little peanut chunks they don't have to be you know, perfect little pill shapes. You can make them uh, little lumpy bumpies, kind of like how we did the crumbs. can't wait to see everybody's paintings. It's been really fun to be able to witness and see all of the different results. So be sure to share your pictures with me after this event is over. And, you know, feel free to leave us a review also and tell people about your experience. And so I don't have anything on the schedule yet, but it looks like I think I'm going to be doing um, a tropical sunset next so I've got some palm trees that need to be painted maybe we can do some kind of a date night or um, a late night we kind of joke I joked with somebody else on one of the other events about doing an insomniac paint night where we're just painting in the <laughs> uh, middle of the night for those people that can't sleep if you guys have days or times that work best for you or you have different themes that you would like to see, please feel free to 
suggest those to me. I have a, um, a group also on Facebook. It's called Paint Nights with Rembrandt Illustration. You can join that and I post all about the classes there. Um, you get chances to vote or give your suggestions or feedback on different things that we're creating for that. So if you guys have stuff in mind that you want to do, I am open, open, open for suggestions and I love hearing from my people. So be sure to check that out. Let me know what you think. And um, what do you guys think about this painting so far? Are you liking what you're doing? Do you have questions? Do you need help? Um, do you want to eat the donuts, all the donuts now? Mm hmm. So you can alternate, you can just stick with one color if you only like one color. In the original painting, like I said, I had uh, rainbow colors. You can add them everywhere. You can just stick to on your donut if that's your preference. Um, I want everybody to be able to have choice. That's the cool thing about art. You get the freedom of choice and we don't have a lot of freedoms of choice right now, guys. So. You know, take them where you can get them, for sure. Mmm, orange sprinkles. <laughs> so see, this painting was just done on paper. So you don't have to have canvas. You don't have to have expensive supplies. If you have cardboard or... Um, scrap paper, notebook, or whatever. You can definitely use these techniques that way. So don't be afraid to just play and do and just try things out because, you know, we're just having fun. We're just having fun. I feel like I need some sweet jams in the background, but we're not allowed to play music with these live videos. So guys, I'm gonna be listening to some sweet jams after I get off of here. And also deciding what I'm making for dinner because after painting donuts, I'm starving. How you doing in Alaska, guys? How you doing in Iowa? Where were you guys from? How are those kiddos doing? So my six-year-old paints with me quite frequently. So if you know somebody that has always wanted to paint but wasn't sure because they have never done it before, these are for all ages all ages and all abilities and anybody can join in and I'm more than happy to answer questions or stop and slow down if you need me to speed up and Wallene don't worry if you're not as fast as me I've been painting for a really long time and so I'm pretty I'm pretty speedy and so I don't expect you guys to be as fast as me and you can paint well after well after we uh, get off here. Oh, and no problem. I am in, we are also, I'm in Washington and we are also on lockdown here too. So I know that the stir crazy is probably setting in pretty bad for some of us. And so it is great to have a, you know, something a little bit different. So here, I'm just gonna show you what the original looked like. So here is the original guys that I showed you at the beginning. And so see, you can even take you know, some of the light color and you can throw it along the edge of the, the wiggly lines here or along the top there just to add even more curve uh, to that. You can add lots of different color sprinkles here. Um, like I said, a variety is the spice of life and I want you guys to have fun and play with what works for you. And some of us might um, 
some of us might not have all the same colors as me and you're limited. So I want to be able to give you guys options for things that you can do with what you have. If you don't have paint, uh, like, you know, regular art paint, you can definitely get into the garage and use house paint. Um, you can use your makeup if you've got some old makeup lying around. Um, you know, we've got time and we have the internet, guys. You can go online and you can figure out fun ways to make paint at home, too. You could use flour and water and add a little bit of food coloring to it. That works well also. Lots of different things that you can do. So, hopefully that was helpful to you guys. What do you guys think? I'm back. So that's all I have for you for today. Um, you know, like I said, you can sit and paint for a really long time well after I'm gone, you know, from the screen. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys had the very basics of how to create a, a fun, colorful painting. And, you know, you can share these as gifts with people. I just used Carly for, for the sprinkles. I just used a very small detail brush. If you don't have a small detail brush like this, you could use like the handle of your paintbrush and just use dots. Um, or you can use like a Q-tip or uh, something that you have lying around the house. But I just used a little small um, detail brush and instead of pointing my brush straight like this, I laid my brush flat with paint on it so I was able to get uh, sprinkles like that. But it makes me happy to be able to come into this space and to work with you guys and see your paintings afterwards. Um, I am one of those people that needs to stay productive and stay creative and so it motivates me to continue to do that and to share with you guys and you know I just want to create something positive and and happy for us all to look forward to including me and you know you can use these paintings as gifts if you are separated from your loved ones or your friends you know send them a, a little postcard or an envelope with your artwork painted on the outside paint rocks with these uh, tips um, you know paint on your clothes paint on your walls and then send me pictures because I want to see all the pictures of all the things. I know that my whole house is going to be covered in paint by the time this is all over. And so anyway, I look forward to this and I, you know, just keep posted on the events. If you subscribe to Rembrandt Illustration or check my event schedule, you will get updates about when the next live classes are. If you guys have suggestions for things that you would like to see or you would like to uh, do or learn about, please share those things with me. Again, if you want to make a contribution to me and help support what we're doing here, you can become a Patreon of mine and subscribe to the Patreon and get perks or you can make one-time donations or you can also leave a little small tip in my PayPal and just say, Hey, and I'm, uh, I'll go through all my messages after this is over, and I'll check back with you. If you have any questions, don't feel afraid to reach out and ask, and I will see you guys next time, okay? Thank you so much. Have a good night.